She was the epitome of classical dancing for me. Um, it had something to do, I think, with the symmetry of her body and the lines she made with, with that body. And of course, the wonderful head placed on the wonderful neck. Um, she had a gentle lyrical quality. She didn't have a bravura technique, but she managed somehow to convince the audience that she had. Margot Fontaine's unique qualities as an artist were recognized by those with whom she worked throughout her long career. She was born in Surrey in 1919, and as a young girl, she moved to Shanghai with her parents. On their return five years later, she was accepted by the school of the Vic Wells Ballet. She was a, a very receptive little girl, of course, and very intelligent. The intelligence was never obvious because she was a very natural person. She had hundreds of friends and good time in life and enjoyed everything. But she had an most amazing way of applying herself to a role, even at that age. But I found her the most incredibly disciplined, receptive child I've ever worked with. And I think all choreographers have the same thing to say about her. Marvelous. This room, I have very happy memories of because uh, when she first arrived and after her uh, snowflake in the nutcracker and also with my young sister, they used to, uh, in the interval, in their little boy's suits, used to sweep the stage of the snowflakes in which they both received two and sixpence extra for. And I was suddenly told at the last minute before the matinee that my girl was off. And to my delight, the new girl came on, Margot Fontaine. Frederick Ashton was the company's choreographer at the time. Fred said, well, if you will teach her and rehearse her, see if she can manage it. And that was when I first started working with her. And so it was always, uh, you know, the musicalities and uh, the uh, musical coloring to try, not just steps. And of course, a lot of our uh, time that we spent in this room here would be uh, talking and discussing because I think a lot of teaching or coaching, you know, Things must be explained before you can try and put them into action. I feel, in a way, you, you didn't ever quite know how much she had taken in until you saw her performance. She was rather more of a performer than a rehearsal. And it was quite staggering sometimes to see the difference between a last rehearsal and the first performance. Very interesting. She, she, she did an awful lot of thinking, and as soon as you realize that, you let her get on with it. You must allow those people to go about their work their own way. And she was utterly reliable and utterly serious. I wasn't her main choreographer by any means. I just put her into one or two of my ballets. She, she didn't, um, she was only in, I think, about two, three of them. No, no, they, she, it, it, the one that made out that way, of course, was Ashton. And I remember when he came to us, because uh, he was bitterly disappointed, Mark Over had just left to work with Dolin, and I said, well, I think we've got something here that will interest you enormously in a very short period of time. And at the very beginning, the rapport wasn't so very strong for a few weeks or months. It really rather funny. They said we couldn't make each other out at all. But uh, uh, time did it. And uh, they each owe an awful lot to each other, I think. <laughs>
remember the ballets that she did, which I did not do, even more than the ones I had shared with her, like the classical ballets. Um, although in Nocturne, I can remember that so vividly. I really thought that was the wonderful part for her. Describe and uh, the poor girl, yeah. the sadness. She was a sad, poor girl in love with the rich man. And she knew she couldn't win or ever have him. And the way she played it was uh, almost brought tears to your eyes, even as another person on the stage. I was the rich girl. I knew I was going to win. And uh, the opposite of those two characters it was really lovely to play and something you really do remember. I was only 14 and the war was on, and it was 1941. And in fact, the very first performance I went into was Giselle, which I somehow feel was one of Margot's greatest roles. And it was my first experience of being close to her on stage. And it's something, of course, that one carries with one in one's heart forever. <laughs> The first of Fontaine's great partnerships was with the celebrated Australian dancer Robert Helpman. They would dance together for 25 years. It was wonderful. The, the feeling there between them, the, the rapport was excellent, really excellent. 